In my last video, I talked about what step is and the format of the exams themselves. In this video, I'm going to talk more about how to prepare. So it's going to be cut into three sections this video. The first one is going to be about practicing technique, so how you actually go through questions and attempt them. The second one will be about resources that you can use to revise for step. And the third one will be about planning and more to the point recording how you've done step questions. So the most important thing is how you actually attempt the questions themselves. Because of the long question style of step questions, because they're meant to take 30 to 45 minutes each question, you'll be, you, you'll want to start, when you start revising, you'll want to start by attempting just individual questions. So when you're doing a question, you will inevitably get stuck and find it difficult. If you can get all the way through it, then great. And there will be mark schemes that you can find. I'll, I'll talk a bit more about where you can find mark schemes a bit later, but there are mark schemes that you can find and check your answer. That's brilliant, but more likely is that you won't be able to get all the way through a question you'll, and you'll get stuck, which is fine because that's what steps meant to do. So you'll get stuck, have a good attempt at the question and maybe if you like the look of the question, then have a go at it and then leave it and come back a few days later after your brain has had a bit of time to kind of process what you've thought about and then you can go back at it with fresh eyes, even if it's a few hours later, go back at it with fresh eyes and re-attempt it and you might have a spark of inspiration and come to something different on the problem that you were struggling to overcome. If you can't do this, if you're really struggling to overcome a specific problem and you can't get somewhere with the question, then you can use the mark scheme, but you want to be really careful with the mark scheme, not to just have a look at the whole mark scheme and read through the whole mark scheme. You want to only look at the parts that are going to be useful to you. So read through, if, if you've attempted the first half of a question, then read through the first half of the mark scheme, the bits of the question that you've done, and check that you've done them correctly. Make sure that you're you're not going off on a complete tangent in a different direction to, to what you should be. You want to go into the mark scheme and have a look at the latest part that you've done and see if you can give yourself a little hint on the problem that you're trying to overcome, but don't give yourself the complete answer. If you look at the rest of the question, then it wastes the rest of the question. But if you just give yourself a little hint on the bit that you are struggling with, show yourself how to do the bit you are struggling with, then you should be able to do that and then attempt the rest of the problem as, as it would be in an exam as a problem instead of something that you've seen the mark scheme of. If you want, then just print out the mark scheme or even on your computer screen, look at the mark scheme and cover it up with a sheet of paper and gradually move the paper, piece of paper down so that you don't see the rest of the mark scheme. You don't want to see the bits of the mark scheme of parts of the question that you haven't looked at yet because that would just be a waste and it would waste that part of the question for you. Once you've read the part of the mark scheme corresponding to the part of the question that you're stuck on, you want to go back and cover up the mark scheme, go back and re-attempt the question, see if with that hint that you've just put into your head whether you can then attempt the question. And likewise, if you find out after reading the mark scheme that the bit that you thought you did well on, you actually got incorrect, then just have a look at the bit that you got wrong and then cover up the mark scheme and go back to the question and see if you can do it yourself. Sometimes it's time to throw in the towel. Sometimes you'll have had enough of a question, have been really working hard at attempting it and it's just not your sort of question. And that's okay, that all just comes down to experience and, and picking the right sort of question. But generally, this way of working in covering up the mark scheme and trying to do it yourself and trying to problem solve the bits that you're, you're able to problem solve, try, trying to solve as much of the problem as you can on your own, will make you as good at problem solving as possible because that's really what's important for step. For step, you need to be as good at solving problems and dealing with unknown things as you possibly can. I started revision for step very early. I started in July before year 13, so I was revising almost a year before I took the exam themselves. 
I started on the Step Support Programme. So the Step Support Programme is an organisation run by Cambridge to help you revising for Step. There's a website and on it it's cut into three different sections based on the three Step exams that you can take. The first one's the Step Foundation Modules, which is a little bit of a deceiving name, but that's based on Step 1. So the Foundation Step Support Programme is split up into 25 assignments. I attempted one of these each day during July when I was first revising for Step. Each assignment has a warm-up, a preparation, a step question taken from an actual step past paper, and then a cool-down. The idea of the warm-up and the preparation is that they give you a little bit of practice on the sort of maths and the topics that will be used in the actual step question. Each one will take you a few hours and also has a hints and solutions file to give you some information on where to go if you're stuck. Again, use these hints and solutions in the way that I explained earlier. Doing these 25 foundation modules will get you used to the sort of question and the long questions that you get in step, as well as the problem solving aspect of it. These foundation support modules require knowledge of A-level maths, but no further maths. So if you've done your year 12 and have learned all of A-level maths, then you should be fine to start doing some of the foundation modules. Once you've done these first 25 assignments, you can then start having a look at the rest of the foundation support program, which is just a set of assorted pure mechanics and statistics step questions. They don't have a warm-up, a preparation, any of that other stuff. They're just a step question, but also have really nicely written out solutions to each. Attempt these gradually and it'll get you gradually used to solving step one problems. You can then also start attempting other step questions that aren't in the step support program. If your A-level is taught non-linear and your A-level maths and A-level further maths are taught at the same time, not one after the other, then you will have to be careful not to be attempting questions that you haven't learned the spec of yet because you'll just waste the question. Once you finish the foundation support modules, you'll then want to move on to doing the step two and step three assignments. These are all just questions. None of them are like the foundation assignments. So they're just questions organized by topic. And so you'll want to start doing the questions based on the topics that you've just learned in school. For example, if in school you've just learned about complex numbers, then have a look on the step two assignment for complex numbers and see if there's any questions that you can attempt based on what you've just learned. Not only will this improve your ability in step, but it'll also help to cement your understanding of the A-level topics that you've just learned. Do this with step three as well. Once you've started learning some of the A2 further maths syllabus, use the questions in the step three support program to start improving your ability to solve step questions based on this content as well. Before the step support program was around, a guy called Stephen Stickloss, who was one of the guys that used to write the step exams, wrote a book on solving problems, and these are all based off step problems. So it's a big book just full of step problems and worked solutions to them. You'll want to use this as a complement to step support program as well because the questions in it still have validity. So gradually just work your way through the questions. They'll start at step one questions and slowly build up to step two and three. They also have like a nice indicator with how many ticks are next to it as to how difficult the question is. So you can kind of pick and choose which questions you want to do from there. I just went through them all linearly, gradually across the start of year 13, went in order down the book. Stephen Stickloss's book is available online for free. He is giving it away for free, you don't have to worry about copyright of that. You can purchase a hard copy and print if you'd like, but that's only if you need it in a hard copy. There's no difference between that and the PDF. The biggest available resource for STEP is the sheer number of past paper questions that exist. STEP started in the format that it currently is, STEP started in 1987 and so there are about 1400 questions to date. That's a lot of practice if each one of them takes you half an hour. You won't manage to get through all of them, but the STEP database will really help you.
If you go on the step database, you can see every single question. Each question is keyworded in the step database with the content as well as the old A-level specification that it used to be on. So for example, if you wanted early A-level pure questions, you'd search C1 and it'll show you all of the step questions that only rely on that content. It can also vaguely search the content of the question itself. So for example, if you search penguins, it will show you the one step question that was ever written about penguins. Each question in the step database is held as an image, but next to each question, you can see the PDF button. If you click the PDF button, it will show you a PDF of the whole paper. This is really useful for past paper purposes because you can then print out the whole paper and use it as a mock. In terms of past papers, I started to see a change in the style of question that you got across the years. From 1987 to about 2000, they were old style of question, so quite different style of question, but they were about as difficult as the current questions are. From about 2013 onwards, the questions started getting more difficult and they're about as difficult as they are at the moment. These are the papers that you're going to want to reserve for doing full mocks. At the start of your revision, especially for step one, you're going to want to just start doing individual questions. Have a look through a paper and see which questions you like the look of and just attempt those. As you start getting more able to solve step questions, once you can maybe do one or two from each paper, you're going to want to start doing a mock of the paper. I started doing this without timing it. I'd take a paper, I'd look through the questions and I'd choose the six that I was going to do or the six that I think I would do if I was sitting that exam. I'd then attempt the six and maybe attempt some of the other questions if I liked the look of them and mark them and give myself a rough estimate as, how, as to how many marks I think I would have got. Once you've done this, you'll want to start doing timed past papers as mocks. Maybe around the late 2000s is when I started doing that. You'll want to make sure that you preserve some of the most recent papers, maybe from about 2014 or 15 onwards. Make sure you preserve these. Don't have a look at the questions so that you can use it as a full mock to do under exam conditions. I will warn you that step three, 2018, was awful, really difficult paper. And also step two, tw 2020, which is the one I did, was horrendous. I'll let you figure these out for yourself though. Don't be demoralized if you get a paper that's really hard because it really depends on the sort of questions that you get, the sort of questions that you like compared to what questions you get. They give you a choice of questions, but in 12 questions, there's only so much of the specification that they can cover. So it can be very variable how you perform in that specific paper. Also, don't forget that the grade boundaries are set based on how well everyone else did in that step paper. So if there's a step paper that's really, really difficult, then that will be reflected in the grade boundaries. For example, for my step paper that I did, our step two paper, step two is generally about 10 marks higher grade boundaries than step three is. But for our paper, step two was 10 marks lower grade boundaries than step three was. There are also some mark scheme resources online that you'll want to know about. So the student room have student made mark schemes, which are when people have attempted a question and they know they either know or think they got it right. They'll write out a solution to that and post it on the student room. These are a useful resource to see how a solution to a question might go. And for some of the older papers, they're the only resource that you have that's anything like a mark scheme. But they're definitely not exhaustive. They don't show you every way that you could possibly complete a question, which is the case for a lot of step questions. You could go around it multiple ways. And they don't show you how many marks that were given for each part of the question. The website MEI also has written solutions to a lot of past papers, which also have the same benefits and drawbacks of the student room solutions. Finally, on the official step website, on the Cambridge Assessment website there's a step page that has a lot of past papers and in each of these past papers there are mark schemes and examiner reports. These mark schemes give a lot more information than the student room or MEI solutions do. 
but they only exist for the most recent papers. You can also use these mark schemes to properly mark and grade papers when you're doing full marks. There's also a GitHub repository that's a collection of step resources from across the years. That's really useful. It has PDFs of stick losses books, as well as tables and graphs of how the grade boundaries have changed over the years. Also, in terms of marking resources, there are some people online that will offer step paper marking as a service. It's not expensive. You scan in your your step paper that you've written and send it off to them and they will mark it, give you a score and a grade and also possibly give you some information about what you could have done better. I use this for step 2019. My final mark I got marked by an external marker. I'll give you a link in the description to who I used. There's probably a number of people that offer this same service though. I used to record in quite a lot of detail when I did a step question and how I did on it. I had a Google Sheet that I used that had all the step questions across time and when I completed one I would write the date and then a quick description underneath of how I think I did in it. If I did it perfectly and completed the question without any prompting I would write the word perfect and I had conditional formatting that would make this gold. I've emptied out my copy of this spreadsheet. There'll be a link in the description where you can go on and duplicate it and then use that spreadsheet to record your step answers. Step one, two and three each have their own sheets and I've blanked out in red the questions that aren't on the current specification for step. I spent some time last year going through the step specification and making a specification map between the step specification and A level Ed Excel maths and further maths. It's a little bit crude, it's just a highlighting of the contents pages of the textbooks in different colours to represent whether they're on or off the specification, but that will probably be quite useful for you to see what is necessary to know and what isn't. I hope you found this useful. If you've got any questions or ideas for future videos that I could make, please leave them in the comments. Thank you very much for watching, bye!